What is up guys, I am back with a brand new video, and in today's video I will be reviewing Sport Creatures for the Nintendo DS. But first, let me get a few things out of the way. Number one, I did a full playthrough of this game on my channel. The link to the playlist will be in the description as well as in the eye at the top right corner of the screen. And second, there is a mouse cursor in most of the gameplay because I recorded most of the footage in an emulator, so don't come after me Nintendo because I own a legit copy of the game. Now, if that's not a legit copy of Spore Creatures for Nintendo DS, I don't know what is. Without further ado, let's get into it. Spore Creatures is a handheld spin-off of Spore developed by Griff Knight Games that was released on the same day as its PC counterpart. This game takes the creature stage of the main Spore and turns it into an RPG sharing a similar art style as Paper Mario. When you first start the game and pick a language, you are greeted with a cinematic where a spaceship crashes. Not too long after that, you are greeted with the main menu. Here, you pick your name and your adventure begins. After the cutscene, you play through a tutorial which introduces you to all of the game's main mechanics. The creature creator, friendship, and combat. First up, the creature creator. Throughout the adventure, you will find and earn parts that you can use to modify the eyes, mouth, body, legs, tail, and fins of your creature, which give your creature different attributes that help with making friends with others or to kill them. These parts can be found throughout the game, but about half are found on the first of five planets called Tapti. There's a limit to how many parts you can have on the body that's shown by the strength bar. This acts just like the complexity meter on the PC version of Spore. But this helps balance the game because it makes you think about what you actually need slash want on your creature. The second mechanic you are introduced to is the friendship system. When you choose to socialize with another, you play a rhythm game in which a song plays and you need to time circles hitting flowers. I played it in emulator so this mini game was hard, but it works way better on real hardware. The third and final main mechanic is the combat. I mean, what RPG does not have combat? When you choose to fight, a combat circle is formed in which you and your opponents fight to the death. At this point, there are two options, run or fight. When you run away, your health goes down to 1 HP and you have to heal. If you choose to fight, you have to furiously swipe your opponents to oblivion, which looks something like this. Or you can use special abilities including a flamethrower and a healing surge, but these use energy which you cannot recover in combat. After the tutorial, we see our friend Ugi get abducted by the ship from the beginning and it is our goal to save him. After that, you travel to the first level using a weird cave system that teleports you from map to map in the early parts of the game. In this level, you have to complete various tasks in order to fix the spaceship we saw at the beginning. After I befriend the Meepers, kill all the scuppies, break a rock, and win a race, we move on to Noodlin, where the next spaceship part can be found. Here in Noodlin, there is more of the same, except we are introduced to terrain gimmick. My favorite. Essentially, certain terrain cannot be walked on unless you have the right legs attached to a creature. This may seem cool in theory, but in practice, it's dumb. This makes it to where only certain legs are practical throughout the game. So now you're left with only 5 viable legs throughout the rest of the game. Fire, sand, grass, ice, and deep water. I can overlook this because the game is very generous with the amount of XP that is gained from tasks, while also just giving you better parts all the time so it's not practical to just keep your creature the same for long periods of time. After we find the spaceship part we move on to the fourth zone on tap T. Zagger. Here we are introduced to another mechanic, repopulating an extinct nest. To do this, we need to find three spoilings and throw them into a dead nest, and it should repopulate. After we repopulate the scuzzy lope nest, we see the spaceship from the beginning finally crash. After this, we are introduced to the main big bad, Gar Scuther, who immediately summons a new ship and runs away. Wow. But not long after, our friend who was abducted in the beginning, Oogie, escapes the broken ship and is sick. Now, with the spaceship parts, we can fix the broken ship and use it to find Gar Scuther, who has the cure. So what do I rate this game? I would have to give it a 8 out of 10. Sport Creatures is really fun, but can get repetitive at times. Other than that, it's a solid experience, and I would highly recommend giving it a try. It's only $6. Go play it already. What are you waiting on? 
And that about wraps things up. If you made it to the end, I would like to say thank you for watching. This was my first review, so it's a bit rough, I know. Comment down below what other games you would like to see me review, and I will see you in the next one.